What's going on guys? This is Makai San and I got you guys here because I want to talk about the least likely characters that we're going to see in Sparking Zero. And yeah, this video is kind of obvious in a way, but still I want to go ahead and speak about this because I've been seeing some people do roster predictions and I actually went ahead and did a roster prediction. The other day I did a stream and that stream is going to be converted into a video. So in the coming day or two, I will have a video out on that. So if you missed out on that stream, look out for the video. And I'll be explaining why I included each specific character on that roster. And of course, there's going to be some people that, oh no, why'd you do this? Why? Did, what about this character? But that's just how it is. It's a roster prediction. The whole point to the prediction is to see who is the closest versus who is the furthest away from having it right and that's what i think is the most interesting of it so right off the bat i want to go ahead and say that manga characters are not going to be in this game now one of the misconceptions people will have is, is oh it's because it costs too much money it's not profitable yada 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 that's not the case one of the reasons why we typically don't see manga characters is because they're not being made into merchandise just yet. Typically, you don't even see toys of manga exclusive characters until they go into the anime. Once a character is put into an anime, then you start seeing toys, merchandise for them, most cases. And this is no different with Dragon Ball because Dragon Ball hasn't had an anime since 2018 and the only anime that it has had is its movies, Broly and Superhero. A lot of the things that we're going to end up seeing in Sparking Zero are going to be from things that already came out. Then there's the whole conversation about oh they're going to make GT movie characters in Dragon Ball into DLC and they're only going to have a bunch of Dragon Ball Super and Dragon Ball Z characters because yada 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 because people just talk and they don't actually think. Well that's also a bit disingenuous to say. We know just from producer reports that this is a sequel to Budokai Tenkaichi 3 and I don't think a sequel that already has a big roster would make a significant cut to its roster it's why I don't necessarily believe that 164 characters is the final number and it was more so something done for the sh the trailers so we're gonna have to hold off on that but going back to what I was kind of getting to the thing that makes me question when people start speaking about the DLC season passes is one of the reasons why season passes even exist is to get more people who haven't bought the game and the people to interact with it. You get characters bought and then usually they're characters that you either didn't expect or they're such fan favorites that because they weren't in the base game, people are going to buy it. I mean, I remember that Dragon Ball Fighters didn't have a bunch of GT characters, and then one of the DLC packs was GT Goku. I'm like, yes, that's the best character. But because that's a new series, the whole narrative, you won't be like, are they going to uh, leave out GT, make them DLC? I mean, it's like, it makes more sense there. But for a series that already has a buttload of characters, if people have this ID idea that they're going to keep or have a large chunk of the characters still there, why do they necessarily say make GT, can not can and make it, make it DLC? It doesn't make sense to me. So what I expect us to get is Daima characters as DLC characters. Why? Because at this time, we don't know at what part of fall Daima is going to drop, and we still don't know if Sparking Zero is going to drop in October, November, or January slash February. If it drops January slash February, I think it's going to be base roster, but if it's dropping in October, November, I don't think it's going to be base roster and it's going to be incorporated in the season pass somehow. Then there's other areas of Dragon Ball that we still have to take into consideration. There's characters that probably never been playable that they can make custom movesets for something unique, but it also has to have some form of advertisement to get people to really want to play with it. Otherwise, what's the point of 
cutting characters and trying to resell them as DLC, and just to hit the nail on that even more, Bandai Namco had the team that makes the One Piece games, the Pirate Warriors games, they cut out characters from the roster from Pirate Warriors 3. They did not attempt to resell all those characters they cut and made them into DLC. I mean, sure, if they would have said, hey, you want to buy NL in this game, I probably would have said yes. They've done a second season pass, and aside from one character, every character that they are selling is new to an extent. Basically, what I'm saying is, is that for characters that people expect to see in the game, we're not going to see them just because everyone thinks that more so it's more likely that they're going to give us never before seen playable characters on the dlc for dragon ball spark and zero because you want to get people to want to buy it you don't want to cut people's favorite characters and say you got to rebuy them it might rub off on fans the wrong way and it might be a weird tactic and Again, this isn't like Tekken and Street Fighter. If this game is like a lot more technical, then it's like, you know what? Maybe they do remove some of our fan favorites and come back. But let's also take into consideration, we have to think about the modernization of Dragon Ball. There are some characters that just quite don't fit the bill, like Frieza Soldier or a pool. And the argument that some might say you need these characters to tell a story, you don't need those particular characters to tell a story. There's characters on the roster of BC3 where I think from a modern take, we could easily argue that a lot of the movie characters are less popular than say GT characters. I would be willing to argue and say that more people would like GT Goku over Tapion. More people would like GT Goku over Dr. Wheelow. More people would like GT Goku over Garlic Jr. Anybody in here that tries to argue and say that's not true, now you guys are being disingenuous because you can look at voting polls and you can see what characters are most popular and what characters aren't that popular. And then just some other characters that I really don't think we're going to see a return of are characters of forms that like were so minimum, like pure evil boo, like you know that gray one that you saw a fight against Majin Buu, like him. Characters like Bobbity, come on my guy. And I've said this before, but people are like, no, that's stupid. And I would even argue some of the Dragon Ball cast like Devil Man and our boy over there, Tambourine, I feel like some of these characters aren't necessarily needed. I just think Dragon Ball as a series, the modern fandom, while the hardcore fans love Dragon Ball, the casuals typically don't digest Dragon Ball, and I think allocating a large percentage of its roster to them would just be foolish. I'm not saying it should be DLC, I'm just saying that you should take away some of the characters that aren't quite relevant. You gotta remember, in the time that Sparking Zero is being made versus when Budokai Tenkaichi 3 was made, it's a completely different market of fans. People who played Budokai Tenkaichi 3 were practically starving because the anime was over, GT was finished for America for a few years. We we quite literally had the ultimate game experience. But if Sparking Zero is going to be a position of the new, it's going to take into account what the current fans like versus what they typically don't like. Just from Fighters, Xenoverse, we know the characters that the fans do typically like. And then we also know what the characters fans don't necessarily dislike, but they don't interact with them as much and it's sad to say but Dragon Ball is the least liked of the Dragon Ball series while Dragon Ball Z is one of the more popular heck people meme super but they interact with super and it's the most relevant Daima is going to be the relevant thing and then GT I'm just saying there are a few characters in GT that could get the bucket like if they opted to get rid of Pan but gave us the younger Pan from the end of Dragon Ball so then hey I'm okay with that if they say opted to get rid of say the Shinron the one Shinron character and it might feel a little sting, but it's like at the same time, there are a lot of GT characters they could add. So it's like 
For DLC, there could be characters that was never playable in a Dragon Ball game finally playable. And that's just something that we have to take into account. There's obviously going to be characters that get removed and some characters that get added, but we got to be here for it. And we can't just rely on the, they're just going to make this whole cast of characters DLC. It's just kind of a, you're not using critical thinking when thinking about what the team could potentially do, because you have to take multiple things into consideration. But I rambled on. I feel like I would give you guys this video. If you guys want to interact with me more, go ahead and join the Discord. It's in the description of this video. And let's just try to get to 50 likes on this video. Nothing crazy. I'm Makai Sand, and I'll catch you guys later.